my name, my name is Seljit. Welcome to the show. Hello there. Yes. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I had to I had to can the other stream, so to speak, because um I realized that um I may have been playing music I didn't have license to, right? So so I had to I had to like quickly end the stream. Otherwise, um you won't be able to watch it because it will be there will be some kind of copy protection on it. I mean I you probably could see it, but I, I didn't want to take a chance. Because it's happened to a few videos before. Hey, Jungza. I think someone asked a question earlier. Uh, I saw the question when I had to switch over. Um, the question was, uh, you're managing Chelsea and teams are playing through your press. Chances are you're playing with um, very high pressing, right? Like extreme settings. And you're probably also... You have to look. It's a multifaceted answer. So when you have teams playing that high when you're playing the high press it's really easy for teams to play around you right or through you so to speak uh that's the ai so you have to you have several answers you have several options this is the reason why it's so multifaceted it depends on what you want to do okay you can either play through over the press meaning if they're going to be pr uh, playing through your press it means that your press is giving them space they can find their passes so naturally they're probably playing on a higher tempo they are probably also very narrow in the shape, making it easier for them to find those passes. So your options are if you still want to play the high pressing game to go really wide. So go wide, just assuming your players can handle the, the passing requirements. And then um, you you allow them to press and then you just, you know, because there's going, they're going to leave gaps. So you just get through them yourself. Uh, the other option, of course, is to lower your pressing so that you have... Uh, you your players don't get uh pass through easily because when you press aggressively like you counter press you break your formation teams can go through your press very easily so if your counter press is set up right and finally it's your you have to look at your tactics do you have too many attacking duties in midfield now sometimes um once you have a lot of funny funny kind of roles like i'm gonna start playing, messing around with some tactics with Kashim Pasha because as some of you probably know, I'm taking part in the FM playoffs and it's the first time I'm actually playing draft mode with people. Um, well, some people might say that it's different, like, you know, as in um, the AI is always playing preset tactics. Now, the argument isn't really valid. Why? Because while the AI does play using the tactical styles which are preset, the tactics themselves aren't the same as the one that are you you are offered, right? When you go into the game the first time. So when you go into the game the first time, those tactics you see, there is no that make some people may think that that's the limit to all the tactics the AI is using. No, that's not true, because um, the tactics for each manager for each manager has got a club. There's a research, there's a researcher there. A researcher does some research and they will recommend uh, roles and duties for the players and a formation and within that tactical style, right? Um, so as I don't, as I are not going to reveal the exact tactical setups of these managers, though I've seen the document, right, a while ago, uh, but it's probably been revised so many times that it's no longer relevant for me. But based on what I saw a few seasons ago, um, Yes, each manager has his own tactical style, his own preferences, roles and duties he might use. Uh, two formations, sometimes even three formations. And um, a manager, the, the, your scouting report may say he plays vertical tiki-taka, but he could have another set of tactics which um, that he can turn to, which might even be direct counter-attacking. So, so that's the first thing. So while these are preset, the tactics, you might see the list, right? The AI is not limited to them. The AI has its own set. So that's the reason why if you go into the game, there is a way to go into the game right now for us to take a look at the AI's tactics. There is definitely a way. However, we can't see the detailed instructions, right? Uh, I did this with a friend of mine like two seasons ago when we we burrowed down to the, the, to the, the code of the game itself. Trust me, there was a lot of funny, funny numbers inside there. We, I, after a while, I just went, okay, all right, this is getting too deep, man. 
So he he still carried on because he wanted to develop an app, and I said, "No, nah, this is this is just this is just feels wrong." Yeah, and um, yeah. So so that, that's to answer the first question and the comment that I got on YouTube. Uh guys, thanks. We've passed the one thousand sub mark. Yay! We finally got partnered on the second channel for Busternet. Yes, uh, as uh, some of you probably know, this is not the only channel that I stream or uh, I do work on. Um, with, with respect to the Game Football Manager, I have another channel called Buster Net where we do shorter form content. And one of the episodes that I've recently done is the Jose Mourinho uh, series, which looks at his tactical evolution and what might just happen at Roma. It wasn't meant to be like a deep dive into the tactics themselves. It's meant to be like, if these are the principles he adopts, what could we see happening at Roma? And I suspect that Roma will be a diamond again. It's his preference for the Serie A. And when I was playing in the Serie A, a lot of teams play narrow. So there are two predominant systems in this area. We have narrow systems like a back tree with one wing back. I call that narrow because, you know, you don't have any other options down the flanks. And um, and that is perfect for his 4 3 2 Or his, you know, we can call it a 4 3 one, two, we can call it a diamond. But, you know, during the transition, it just shifts into a diamond. And um, there are a lot of teams that have played a 4 2 3 one as well. So these are the two formations I expect to see Jose Mourinho um, use a lot. And probably in um, some other matches, difficult matches, he might opt to go for the 4 3 3. So, this is going to be very interesting. I want to see how far I'm right. And um, as far as strikers are concerned, <laughs> some of you were surprised that Simeon Zaza can score 31 goals. <laughs> yes, I managed to get Simeon Zaza to score 31 goals, man. That's like getting Piatek to score, become the top scorer in the league. Yeah, so it was quite fun, quite fun. But Roma looked like they will have to make a few changes, especially in the striking department. There's no way that squad is going to compete if they depend on the uh, rather... I mean, he's prolific, but I mean, look, his prolific years are well behind. I know. We can talk about it in terms of history and legends. Um, yeah, Pellegrini is probably going to stay now that I've done my save. <laughs> Eric Mkhitaryan, no way he's going to be there. Uh, that that squad is really exciting. I, I like the Roma squad. And in fact, I like the whole Italian team. Look, another show is coming up on the main channel, just to let you guys know. All right. It's going to be um, Euro 2020 look ahead. So, so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to present all the clubs, all the clubs, all the nations, right? We're going to talk about all the nations that have qualified. We're going to talk about their road to the qualifications. We're going to talk about their chances. Okay, there's going to be a few shows leading up to the main event, so we can we can expect quite a few shows, right? So, so there's going to be one almost every week. So I'm going to look at the clubs and stop saying clubs. I'm going to look at the nations. I'm going to look at um the the managers, the tactics. Um, I'm also we're also going to have a little game, right? We're going to see who's we're going to play something on the stream and uh, it's just a small little game you can you guys can take part. i don't know how we're going to organize this but essentially i want to know your predictions for the euros essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go backwards so you pick your winners of euro but you have to you have to give me the top eight but they have to be in order meaning you have to predict the winner the finals, who's going to pop up in the finals? Who's going to pop up in the semi-finals? And who's going to pop up in the quarterfinals, right? So how would we determine the winner? The winner will determine the winner by first, the winner is going to be very simple. Whoever predicts the winner is going to win, right? It's a little competition. So if you predict um, North Macedonia is going to win the Euros, you win, okay? You, you win, but if there are two of you who had predicted North Macedonia, we go into a playoffs. That means we want to see how many you got right. So if you pick North Macedonia and Italy in the final, and I pick North Macedonia and France in the final, and it was North Macedonia and Italy, you win because you got two right. It's a really simple way of playing it because I used to do this. I used to organize pools last time um, in every, every single network I worked in. So I used to organize the betting pools. Right, so I would have this uh, pool and then everybody would contribute like about 10 or 50 bucks. Yeah, there was a, the best, the one I won was uh, 50 bucks. So we had about 100 people taking part. <laughs> I won the pool. <laughs> so, uh, 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something. But there's no money involved. There won't be any money involved. We wanna maintain this. We wanna make it kid child friendly at least. Um, and we will do this, right? We'll have some fun. So I don't I don't know what the prizes are gonna be. I'm, I'm gonna think of a prize for somebody who wins this, right? So definitely, I'm gonna give away a prize to one of you who takes part. And uh, yeah, how will we submit? Uh, probably June the 14th uh, there'll be a stream I'll do a stream and then I will try and figure a way out figure a way to submit a form I think yeah it'll be a form I think a Google form right that's the easiest so I'll create a Google form for you so what you do is you predict 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 and you have to give me a YouTube name right and your email because if you win I've got to send something to you right so I, I need your email address at least so if you don't want to put in an email address and you just want to, oh, thank you, I just want, that's all I want to know, that'd be fine too. So guys, that's the news. And uh, let me get on with the, uh, you know, preliminaries like, how are you doing? Jungsa, how are you, man? Madhav Nair, hello there. Martin Tan, welcome to the show. Jungsa, you really enjoyed your latest Roma Mourinho work. Oh man, I was so tired when I did the video, I hadn't slept the whole night. Because as you know, I'm taking part in the FM playoffs, right? So I had, a, I had a, my first look at the database. In fact, right now, I, I have this yearning right now, right? To just open my draft mode up to one of you or a few of you. And then we can have a draft mode, like uh, a league, right? We set up a league and we play. But it's the problem with these kind of things is it's a time commitment. The only problem for me is kids are going to be home in about three hours. So that's not enough time. Yeah, so that's not enough time. I need to I need a, to do a stream and I need to commit like five hours to it. And uh, you guys pop in and then we can just do a draft. Like you guys take part. I mean, of course, I'll stream. But, you know, uh, there's less. It's just like, you know, if when, uh, you know, I'll probably end up watching your games. That's about the best I can do. Now, I've got to get my tactics sorted. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm doing on the day, right? Because um, for these kind of draft ball competitions, I've never taken part in one of those before. So, I was thinking to myself, like, the limit is 18 to 20 players in this draft mode competition, right? So, we've got 18 to 20 players. And um, the, the, the value, is for me, is irrelevant. 400, 500, does, I don't really care. But when you make it 418, instead of a squad of 24, when it's 24, I kind of feel like I have the edge. But when you make it 18 to 20, it's different because then... You can't double up for every single position. Because if you play 24, you can double up for every single position and have more, right? So you can probably set up one up for a 4-4-2, 3-4-1-2, you name it. You can have any permutation or tactical systems in your head. So the guy who's making the most tactics is probably going to be... It might be fun for him, but it also can be a bloody nightmare because... If you play so many tactics... You're basically trying to cover your your bets with uh, the formation. So that's also not an ideal thing to do. So I haven't really decided what I'm going to be playing, what formation I'm going to be using. Whatever formations I use, they have to have the, the ability to change. Like I once... I, they're not... I mean, a few of us, I think in the community, have had the privilege to play with Paul Collier. Paul Collier is the creator of the game. So I had a chance to play with Paul a long time ago. So it was one of those great games that we had. We played a best of three. And uh, it was so difficult. It was tight. The two of us had a lot of fun. So he played a 4-4-2. I played a 4-3-1-2. I was leading by two goals to nil. And then he changed his tactics slightly. He came back, it was 2-2. Oh, man. We drew. We never beat each other. It was like, draw, draw, draw. Yeah. But it's different. Like, even when I was playing in the FM, in those days, I, I don't know if you guys remember FM Live. That was our last version where we play in real time, right? It's different when you play FM Live. Like, you know, it's not the same thing anymore, right? The AI is the AI. To some extent, people are right. It's um, predictable. You know what the AI is going to do. That makes it easy. But when you play against a person... A, you don't have time to go on comprehensive highlights. No way, man. This, you think this draft mode's got time, right? You want to see full match mode? <laughs> Guess again. 
nobody is going to want people i you know when i played draft with my friend the other day we had to play on key highlights because of his impatient i don't know i can be asked let's just watch it on key it's taking too long to finish so you don't have you don't have a chance to make changes like you know that is basically tactic versus tactic so if you so you have to think about the other people who are playing as well so if you end up playing it on like key or extended then man that is that you got to watch the game like a hawk so how much can you see in that short window, right? So it's going to be very interesting. So if you guys are keen, yes, I'll be taking part with quite a number of characters. We've got Kegman Place, we've got FM Stinger, we've got Simaggio, we got a Demand More FM, we got Stick Piano. These are all guys that some of you may, you haven't, may not have heard of them, but I can say one thing about the community. I feel like I can retire. <laughs> I really do. As far as creating gu tactical guides are concerned, I feel like concentrating only on my Discord and just doing it there now. Because the community has grown so much in the last couple of years. There are so many fantastic tactical tactic creators out there. And I'm not about to go in and go, oh, he's wrong, he's right, he's wrong, he's right. I can't be, I, 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 I don't want to do that. I mean, everybody has a different way of playing. That's the beautiful thing about this game. So some people might say that the overlap, for example, is unnecessary because the players naturally overlap. That's true. You know, that's one way of looking at it. I we are breaking. I've been breaking my tact. I've been breaking tactics down for such a long time. I'm just glad to see other people doing it now, and uh, the community has grown. It certainly has grown, man. So that's the new generation, which is explains why on the SI forums, I only I only go in, you know, I don't really start discussions anymore. I used to last time, but now I'm I try to help out where I can. I don't go and start a new like a long 10 page essay on the uh, principles of mentality. That is all done and dusted. You know, you want to check that out. Go back to 1993, 19, what was it? 1998, 2001. <laughs> It's still valid until today. Like, for example, I'm going to talk about flexibility as well. Team flexibility has a place in this game. Team, sorry, team fluidity has a place in this game. Right? It has a place in the game. So, But sometimes, you know, people might not realize that on certain settings, you know, some on some settings, you know, very fluid might not work. Right? Why? Because the team flexibility is kicking in some funny, funny things. Peter, how are you, man? Cyrus, the family is doing well. Thanks for asking. Chico, 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 Miko, how are you, man? Martin Tan, I just saw the news of Stevie was linked to take over Everton after Angelotti take. It makes my days. What? Stevie? That must be the joke of the century, right? If Stevie G goes to Everton, he's probably going to live in Scotland for the rest of his life. Mkhitaryan signed a new contract. Oh my God, he did! Mickey signed for Mourinho? What's going on, man? This is strange. Mickey, okay, okay. let's look at the situation, right? Mkhitaryan was originally signed by Mourinho when he was managing uh, United. He did. But there was he couldn't get him to play well, right? So after a while, he, he, you know, he, he, he kind of like, you know, I can't use you anymore. Let's, you know, let's get rid of you. But, I mean, I, we do know that Mourinho's style has changed over the years now. He's he tends to favor some flair in the final third, right? Otherwise, he can't unlock sides. So, but he's already got Pelle, he's already got Pellegrini. He's got Zanilo who can play in the center. Zanilo is most likely going to come in from a wider position, just like he does for Italy. Oh, speaking of which, oh no, 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 we're not going to go into the Euros yet. I'll talk about the Euros uh, on tomorrow's show. That's why my plan. I, I written a script already. I'm going to edit it today. It's a short intro. Groups A, B, and C. Then I'll do D, E, and F on Monday, uh, Tuesday. Uh, then um, probably a tactical guide video on Thursday. And then I'll then start looking at each group individually. And then we'll apply it to football manager and you know break those tactics down as well that what they might be using on the day. Take a look at some of the players. And of course... A few days before, I'm going to look at Bet365. Not because I want to bring you there, but, you know, I want to see what's happening there. 
Both of my FM twenties are Croatia one Euro twenty twenty. Hey, don't knock Croatia. Croatia uh, uh, not bad at the moment. You got Brozovic, right? So he's really grown in the last couple of years. Uh, they finally have that rock in the center of midfield. I mean, the team that I'm most worried about is Russia. Because Russia didn't exactly top the table, right? Okay. But they don't exactly have a keeper either. <laughs> Akin Kiev or whatever you are, how you pronounce his name, he's retired. They have a very ta- they have some talented players like Golovin, you know, talented players, but it's not enough, right? Denmark only have Kasper Schmeichel. <laughs> Christian Eriksen may not even be there. I don't know. Uh, he might be there. They like the shirt? Yeah, man. It's the Irish shirt. Northern Ireland. There's a tournament predictor, UFI side. We can predict that and share a screenshot in Discord. Yeah, why not? We are not. It's going to be a great weekend. Yes, man. FM Stinger is going to be a great weekend. Aye, aye, aye. Have you, aye. If you're still here, have you guys been playing friendly matches against each other? Or every, is everyone keeping to themselves? Because I know some of the guys, the lads do play against each other. I have, I have no clue what to expect, man, from this FM draft one. I don't even know what to do. Like, I'm going to probably sit down there and go like, really? Is that what you guys do? <laughs> Joseph, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, man, Gerard goes to Everton. That's it, man. That's the end of football as we know it on Muzzy's side. <laughs> That'll be war. <laughs> I mean, he does have family. Okay, look, look, look. Let's just clear one, get one thing straight, right? Okay. In Liverpool, you can have a Liverpool fan and an Everton fan in the same family. Okay, let's just, let's just, let's just, it's not unheard of, right? Okay. It's not that the whole family are Liverpool fans. It, it's, it's, a, it's a very, bro- it's a brotherly love kind of thing. Safanov, young goalkeeper. That's exactly it, right? They're going to have a young keeper. Speaking about young, my, look at Turkey. Turkey are probably going to be like, you know, the the bleeding of the young. Seriously. Okay. They got Z- uh, Celik as right back. They left back, they got a few options, but all young players. Then we got Soyuncu as a central defender. And then the, all the rest of the, and we got Demiral and then we got the rest of them like Ozan Kabak and a lot of youngsters. Then we have only, the only mainstay in the Turkish team is a striker who's been there for many years. Then we've got Cengiz Under, and then we've got another bunch of youngsters as well. So this Turkish team, who also happened to have, they took uh, four points off France in the qualifiers. All right, let's just let's just put it out there. They took four points off France. Problem for France was, and it's been a problem for France, right? Okay, France's problem has always been this: um, they were great attacking teams right through the transition because of the way Kylian Mbappe is built for speed <laughs> this Euros they'll have I think they're going to be bringing Karim Benzema because they, they have to play with a mid block as well so if they bring a mid block into the game then I will probably see Lema being put on the bench and Karim Benzema on the pitch and if Mbappe on the Mbappe on the left flank um Benzema in front, Antoine Griezmann in the center in a regular 4-2-3 run. Yeah. My, your bet for a surprise tournament. Ukraine. Ukraine had a very good qualification. Had a very, very good qualification. Very impressed with them. Uh, I have a funny feeling, right? Because I haven't done the whole predictor thing yet. No, I'll have to do the predictor thing before I see the whole situation. I'm looking at Italy. It's a dark horses. But maybe it's because, you know, I got the soft I got, I got soft spot for Scotland. No, they don't. I mean, look, Scotland, they had to take the, the you know, Nations League path, right, to get there. The uh, playoffs. Uh, they, who did they? I can't remember who they beat, but it's going to come out in tomorrow's show. Ukraine will do well. Italy, I'm looking at Italy. But I swear to God, that group of death is a group of death, man. France, Germany, Portugal, and Hungary. Whoever finishes third in their group may not even make it to the next round. Because they're all difficult teams, right? So France, Germany, Portugal, and Hungary. You know, Hungary is probably going there. What did we do to get in here? We haven't been into a ma- We haven't done something major like this in the 70s. And the first time we are here, we got to play France, Germany, and Portugal. <laughs> I feel for Hungary, man. I really do. And then there's the, another group, right? If you look at it, you look at the, the most defensive sides you can think of. It's Denmark, Finland. Um, wait, Denmark, Finland. 
Ah, oh, shit, I can't remember the next two. Because when I saw those two in the same row, I went like, I feel sorry for the teams in here as well because those are defensive teams. And they'll, they'll line up like with five or six at the back and go strikers. There will be a few teams, just like in the World Cup, we had a few teams playing strikers, right? So there will be a th there will be quite a number of teams playing strikers, especially the underdogs. The boys don't play draft friendly, it's too secretive. Oh man, I'm probably going to do a stream where I just show you how I make my I'm, the tactics I'm going to be playing. I For me, it's more like fun, right? I just want to have fun. I, I just want to have fun, man. I don't care who wins, as long as I get to laugh at myself. My laptop screen crashed, so I have no F. Oh my goodness, I feel for you, man. How does your how does the screen crash only? Laptop crashed. You know FM twenty one so much charge. Oh man, find you the three four two one for Roma. Three four two one is a fun type thing. <laughs> BK Eaton, as a Turkish person, I see our chances of winning quite far. I look Turkey has a very good chance of doing well. Look that manager that you have for Turkey. Brought you to... Look, the Turkish team has proven in the past you do not count the Turkish out. That Turkish team has potential. Right. They have potential. They finished, what, third in the World Cup? I think it was 2002, right? I right. was it 2002. I think they finished third. That Turkish team has got chances, man. Has got chances. Hungary is good. Um, I don't think they'll be good enough to take on the likes of France, Germany and Portugal. Man. No, no, no. They may be good, but they, they could have been... I mean, right now, they're probably wishing they were in the same group with Finland and Denmark. Your CD 192 jumping and hitting 15, positioning 14, strength 14, but he's only able to win 42% of hitters. Wow, that's sad, man. Uh, what about his anticipation? Can you check his anticipation? Maybe his anticipation needs to be improved. If he can improve his anticipation, maybe his positioning, his positioning looks good, his strength looks good. Look, everything looks like he should be winning haters. It could be a mental thing or it could be an acceleration thing. Maybe he's not getting into that position. Your LCD connection is loose. No wonder. Oh man, that's got to be, that's so annoying, right? When your laptop has an else that, that, that loose yeah, yeah, I've had that happen to me. I used to use a Toshiba laptop once, long time ago, and I left far, far away when, you know, Toshiba laptops were this big. <laughs> okay. Seriously, there was a time my Toshiba laptop was so heavy, I could have used it as a deadly weapon. Okay. Man. Hey, smooth operator. Yeah, then, then Joe, Martin, you better look at your setup because there should be no way he's uh, having problems, man. 15, okay, okay, having said that, 15 isn't exactly the world's best in terms of jumping reach, right? 15 is like average for most defenders. Uh, 16 and 17 is the one that, you know, they've been... The thing about this damn game is it's so attribute-driven. It is so attribute-driven. Okay, I was... I like this 4 2 three, one. So we got to... Okay, we're back here with the Kashim Pasha save. In case you guys are wondering, right? This is my Kashim Pasha save. Essentially, it's a Ernst Happel challenge where I try to emulate the successes of this wonderful manager who's won multiple titles in his storied career. We're still in stage one, uh, where we are still in country one. And I have to go from country one. I basically have to move through at least four countries. Right? At the rate I'm playing this game, <laughs> it'll be FM 37 before I finish this. Uh, and uh, we want to attract the attention of a big club so that we can, you know, get our, you know, our, can leave. So, I have this, oh, wow, I played a 4-2-4. Man, bold and beautiful. Seriously, sometimes I come on my, I come on my saves, right? I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay. All right. So, this is, oh, I created a liquid system. Really? I have to have conversations with myself. Okay, this is a bit much. Okay, Daljit, really? What are you doing? Wing, wing, wing. Okay, okay, all right, fine. We'll just go on positive next game. We'll just see what this does. Sha Sade, Sa smooth operator. Of course, who doesn't like Sade? Sade is like that, you know, chill out. You bring a... You Sade is the kind of music you hear when you go on a date with a girl and you want to show her how cultured you are and you order red wine instead of beer. That kind of thing. 
And my wife, my wife does that whole thing once in a while. I, I once went out with a girl, okay? This is Asia, seriously. So I told her that we were going, I mean, this one is like face to face, man. Let's dump the game from I went out on a date with this girl once, right? Okay. So here I am, recently divorced, still single. So it's very much in the market, right? So, so here we are, we go out. So I went to drive, went to pick her up. I picked her up and this is Asia, temperature 32 degrees, the kind of daytime temperature, 28 degrees, maybe 26 degrees in the evening. Okay. She wears this nice dress and then she puts on this like furry thing around her, you know. I'm staring at her as she comes out. She's wearing this like, you know, how people wear this, or I don't know what they call it, like a furry thing around it. I'm like, looking at her going like, so in my heart, in my mind here, I'm thinking, oh, she's got a great body. All we're going to do is have sex. Because I cannot look past her for intelligence. Yeah, because there is no way we're ever going to get into a seriously long-term relationship. We go for wine, you know, but it's just that, you know, I don't know why I had to bring that up. <laughs> temperature thing. I don't know. Only we, we went on wine. We finished third in 2020. Same coach, right? That coach is going to bring you some success. And the Turkish team is the first... Okay. Turkey, as a team, right, started their work uh, Euro preparations two weeks before all the other teams. So there's some serious, serious uh, considerations we have to make about Turkey. Turkey has got strong chances. In, th in the 3 4 two, one, what would be your suggested roles? I am running with an AM. Okay, I have 3 four. There are four letters, a three, four, two, one inside it. Three. Four, your, where's your four? Is it um, is it wing back or DWs or white midfielders? I will probably go with uh, depending on how I set up my wings. It all depends on how I set up my wings. If I want to play a very attacking three, four, two, one, where I've used wingers before or many times, then. I have wingers on attack. Then I make sure that the AM is an anchor. So it's an AM on S. Because we, we got all these guys bombing down the flanks. We don't need so many to, to, from the center to be running. Otherwise, we'll get uh, we'll open up too much space. So I play AMS. Now, if I play with a DW or a WM and then one, like, you know, another role that maybe may be cutting inside, then the, the guy in the middle could be a shadow striker with a role that's dropping deep in the striker's position, right? So a PFS or some, uh, maybe a DLF, a DLF on support. So it really depends on how you set up your two flank players. So a lot of it depends on your flank players. You're running with AMS and Shadow Striker with a complete forward support. Okay, that can work. Yeah, AMS, Shadow Striker, tri uh, AMS, Shadow Striker, and a Striker. Then your left flank, make sure that you have an inverted winger coming up or a winger coming up, then you can really take advantage of that AMS. Otherwise, it's going to it's gonna hang a bit, right? Because then your, your attacks will just dwarf. Because on the left, they'll just, you know, they'll just evaporate. Yeah. Like, yeah. But it's a nice concept. I like that. Hey, wingbacks. Yeah, wingbacks are fine, man, Joseph. Wingbacks are cool. Wingbacks, oh, if they are wingbacks, then your wingbacks have to be on attack duty. Yeah. Or support. But they have to get up the pitch. They got to own the pitch, man. They got to own the pitch, yeah. I love that kind of a setup, but I know I'm so petrified of playing it in a competitive environment against another person. All right. Cherny, Urson, Dokukan, the Dokus, man, in midfield. So we've got. <laughs> A roaming playmaker. We've got this guy. We've got Alperen, Ahmed, Fatih. This is actually not too bad. Uh, Takan Serbest can come on for one of these two. These two up top. Uh, Joey, uh, what I can do is I can play a stronger lineup. So I put this guy out. Mm. We have a right back. about this league is that you always have to play with um, two under 22s. So these are two under 22s, which means that I can uh, play uh, like senior players in these two positions. These guys are um, 23 years old, so they're already too old. Right? So I can definitely take one of them off. Passing vision decisions, 11. He's improving, on, isn't he? Um, this guy's off the ball is okay, but dribbling 13, we can put somebody else here. 
Okay, so let's look for a player that can play as a Mezala on attack. Okay, so what we want to see is a Mezala kind of player. No, you you definitely you're reaching the. <laughs> I feel sorry for that player. He's not gonna get a look in anymore. Melkisa Kok now is another youngster in our team. He can play as a playmaker. Passing vision decisions, that's about it. But he is definitely much better. Um Genghis Inns, Hassan Bilal. So, so there's no one here. Koke Gurney is passing vision decisions. Some flair. No drib no, has dribbling as well. Can win the ball. Dictates runs with ball often. Off the ball, eight. He's not gonna get in the box. I want somebody who can get inside the box. Mm, seven and twelve. Looks like Takan Sabas has to play. But he's 30 years old. Okay, never mind. We'll just play you, son. Okay, you play. So the other Mazala. Okay. Alright, let's go for this, man. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I think some people get very, uh, you know, um, nervy when they play a high pressing game, right? And then um, they lose the ball. But if you lose the ball with a high pressing game, then your players aren't good enough to play a high pressing game, right? So you have to look at the whole equation. Yeah, Mazala will, cr will cramp the center. You got a Mazala in central midfield in your 3 4 2 1? Hmm, I don't think that's a good idea. You got two wing backs on attack, right? Okay. And you've got AM on support. Okay. Two wing backs on attack. Okay. Mazala. You got a shadow striker. DLP on support can hold can one side will have to have a DLP on support. The other player can be a central midfielder on support. He can be a the best role is probably central midfielder on support or the other central midfielder. One of them can be a DLP. The other one can be a central midfielder on support because you're using a wing back to bring the ball forward. You can also play. Three defenders, you got three at the back, right? So one of them can be a DLP. The CM can actually be a CM on attack as well. But the problem with the CM on attack, he might go to the center, right? So you want him to have move into cha move into channels. Now, if you use a Mazala, that's not too bad if he has, you know, he's moving into the channels to support the wing back. If he's going into the center to crowd the center, it's probably because there is space. So put the Mazala on the side of the AMS. You know, on the side of the Shadow Striker, rather. So you got Shadow Striker, Mazala, and your wing back, right? Because if you put him on the side of the AMS, that's why you're getting so much congestion. But if you put him on the side of the Shadow Striker, there won't be so much congestion. Yeah, that's how I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes a lot more sense to me. Man, I'm hungry. I haven't had dinner. In Asia, this was... We are streaming during dinner. Okay, so far looking alright. Uh, he, he had options. My tempo? What's my tempo? Um, still okay. Oh, no wonder. Nice, finally. Okay, got it. He did a cutback. Oh, 
took it on the stride. Yeah, all right. Question Pasha looking pretty decent, but we've given them quite a few chances already. It's not looking good. You know why? Because a lot of the my attacks are breaking up right there in midfield. Not very nice. Not very nice. We're, we're, we're not breaking up. We're breaking up there. It's like, you know, I'm not getting any thrust in the final third. See, I, I, this is the part where I'm worried about. There we go. Again, right? So, i going to change something here. <laughs> Took me long enough. Yeah, this is what I thought, right? So he's on the side of the AMS. That's why he got congestion. Put him, put the Mazar on the side of the Shadow Striker. You should be fine. It's a penalty. No free kick. Good defensive hitter. I'm bored. I need to make a new tactic. Oh, before I... <laughs> that kind of... No, it's an offside. How to set up the role of white midfielder for the AM RL position. For which tactic? I don't know, man. Bivin, I'm like totally lost right now. I, I was talking about Joseph's tactic, right? It's 3 4 2 one I don't know which... Now I'm totally lost. I have no idea what tactic you're talking about. Do you find the battery size get poor rating even though the team keeps a clean sheet? Oh, don't worry about rating so much, right? Okay, what is your definition of poor rating? 6.8, like I've always said before, is meeting expectations. 6.8 is decent, it's meeting expectations. 7, 7 is pretty decent. 7.2, you should be happy, right? Like now, most of my team is meeting expectations. 6.6, .6, well, you know, it's not really performing very well. 6.7, slowly climbing up. Uh, so it depends on what you define as good uh, poor rating sometimes defended sometimes players don't have anything to do oh man no that was definitely something else uh, all this all this tactical tinkering is not helping me much okay let's go Takan Tokukan come here Joey come here Joey come here okay uh, Mezala here Journey here Onu here Ali here Okay, let's go. All that tactical tinkering. <laughs> it hit the post from there. So, um, there was a bit of a ratings change this season for FM21. So, if you are getting... I think to get 10 uh, ratings of 10, you literally have to score 4 goals for a player. Yeah. Last time we could get a rating of 10 with a hat-trick. No, no. But it's not that bad. I mean, I wouldn't press... I wouldn't... I wouldn't fuss away unless it's 6.5, right? So, anything less than 6.5 is bad. You have to remember our main keeper also retired, Ramazan Koze. So I have another problem. We don't have a keeper. We have to go and get a keeper. That kind of put a little dampener on things. Okay, that's it.
6.3 this 6.3 is not good 6.3 is not a good rating so look at things like past completion numbers um to improve his ratings look at his past completion numbers are they like in the 90s 80s some, what is it what is it he should not be seeing 6.3 for a defender oh man we just guys we've been messing with tactics right so we're losing now this is bad Everything is going haywire today. Somebody just went and just did that. Just did that. Like, you know, kicking the ball forward. It, and the white midfield seems to work well, but it's midfield not an MR. White midfielder in a 3 4 1 2, yeah, they can. A 3 4 2 1 also can work. WM, right? The 3 4 WM one works very well. My personal favorite is wingers, but I'm like psychotic in that regard. Because AI is predictable, so like wingers. I'm just, I'm just trying to. I mean, I have a lot of 4 2 3 1 tactics, but. I keep messing with them so much that now I've forgotten half my tactical setups. So we're trying to recover at least, you know. Okay, we got inverter winger going this way. We got CM on support here. We got DLP here. What's wrong with this picture? Something is wrong with this setup. Mm, complete, complete forward inverter winger attacking this way. These two. Okay, I get a track what Tista, he'll attack the box or he'll drop deep, right? So, we got CM on support, I'm, I'm using a generic role, then we have to look at his attributes. Parking, passing, fa basically fairly average, but he's not doing a really good job at the moment, right? So, that's one of the reasons why I'm thinking of just giving him a specific duty to do, or like a role and duty, so that he just does this only. Okay, so track what Tista will drop. DLP, uh, okay, we'll turn the DLP on support since he's holding position. Okay, so this guy's gonna work a bit higher. This guy, now what about these two? Now, the, the problem with the fullback is there's gonna be a big distance for him to cover, right? So, which explains why just now we had a problem with our ball. Um, we couldn't find, uh, we had this ball just going haywire, right? This guy just hoofed the ball up. Alright, so now we got a complete wing back. Now he should be able to help him out. The other alternative, of course, is to play with a overlap. The overlap will reduce the mentality of this guy, but I don't want to do an overlap. Um here we can we can play with a full balance support, but it's so un, so unambitious. I'm gonna go full back on the tank. Yeah. Then we are gonna play counter regroup lower line of engagement. Rear shot goalkeeper distribution. Okay, let's go. Okay. 
When you set up a 4 3 1 2 narrow should be improved, be at least wing back. Oh, yeah, you should play wing backs in a 4 3 1 2. You want them to dominate the flank, like I said, get up there and do some shit, right? So, you play fullbacks, you might not get that. You, you might not get that kind of a presence on the flanks. So, you definitely want to use. Uh, you definitely want to use wing backs. You can use fullbacks on attack, but sometimes you need them to dribble a lot. I mean, like, when a 4 3 1 2, you need them to take ownership of the flank. Like, they might even have to dribble more, right? So, wing backs do that. So, you definitely look at a wing back setup. Safe. This one has a work in progress. This is like a work in progress tactic. What we're losing matches. I don't know. I, I keep doing this, right? Last match, last game we played a 4 2 4 because I felt bored. Now I'm feeling bored again. So we went ahead and made a 4 2 3 1. Not really made one. We they were using this before. But I want to play a 4 2 3 1. When you, I've, hey Warong, you've decided to start a save with Sheffield Wednesday. Nice club to pick, man. Main tactic 3 4 1 2. Okay, cool. And a very narrow 3 4 1 2 and a very narrow counter 4 4 4 1. Four, we, why very narrow? As a counter attacking tactic. I mean, the reason I'm asking this question is when you play very narrow, you're opening up the flanks, right? So you want to make you want it to be counter-attacking, but you're playing 4 4 1 1. So you're obviously going to be using the flanks. At least one of the flanks. So if you're gonna use like roles like wingers, then maybe standard width, like give your give yourself a chance to attack. You can always uh play a narrow defensive width, right? So your boys stuck inside when the ball comes to them. Speaking of which, that's what I should do. Okay. That way the front, um, that way you, you're just playing badly against this team. This is a poor performance from us, away from home. On a day when the manager obviously doesn't know what he's doing. So I would, I would definitely play with standard width for the tank thing. Yeah, you got inspiration from the Jose videos? Oh, thanks, man. I should be playing a 4-3-3 with this team. But I want to play a 4-2-3-1. I mean, this is me being stubborn. You know? It's not... The logic has been thrown out of the window. Right? You know, this is uh, not one of the top sides. Why you want to... Why don't I play a 4-2-3-1 with a DM, for example? No, I am stubborn right now. I don't care. I want to play a 4-2-3-1. This is me sometimes. I, I just refuse to uh, do something that is uh, uh, better for the team. I just want to make it work. And I get, I get, I get this, uh, I'm like a dog with a bone. I won't let it go. It's one of the, my, it's a very major character flaw of mine. If I'm determined to do something, I will just keep doing it, right? Like, and it's like the, sometimes, sometimes it can be, reach a point of lunacy. <laughs> Where I keep trying something 10 times, 20 times. I once played golf, okay, with my friends. That was long ago when I could play golf. And then we had to clear this lake. Okay. Now, I know I can hit 200 yards with a iron. So I was I was there and I went like, okay, I'm going to clear. I'm going to go for this. But I can clear just 200 yards. I can definitely clear this with, the, uh, with an iron. So I just set everything up and clobbered the ball over the, over the lake. Now, everybody was laying up. No, me, I want to clear the lake. The first shot hit the edge of the leg because I didn't get a clean hit. Okay, I didn't get a clean hit. So it went all the way and then he took... I saw it hit the edge and he just rolled back in. So I was pissed like hell. So I put a ball down. I kept doing that, right, for another six attempts. My friends just said, hey, look, you just take a 12, right? Just, just stop. No, no, no. I stood there and I kept hitting balls because I just wanted to clear the leg. <laughs> I was so, so a damn. And that's my biggest character flaw. Because I want to just do it and then I'm done, right? Know that I can do it. In the end, I didn't do it. <laughs> I was so pissed. 
So now I, I'm in, I hit the same phase again. I'm stubborn as hell. I know this can work. I just have to, I just have to pay attention. I gotta adjust one more thing. Passing instructions. And I can turn this into a very solid 4231. We're back in training. Manager is looking for training. Okay. We got a few more days to go. Yay. Hey, we had we had all these tactics we could choose. We got no no no. Now I'm playing with differently. All the while we've been doing well with a 433. Right? We just lost this and I suddenly I went into this spasm. Okay, load. Where's my 4231 Kashim Pasha? Knowing my luck, right? There it is. Okay, something is missing in this equation, right? It's probably this. It's narrow but still standard, right? Okay. Because this guy is going to go long, this guy will definitely have to go there done all right now what else do we want we want this guy to be an ncd yes so shall we play so say i <laughs> stop it they saw yeah they, they have no options across the board i keep you right man no 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 you understood that absolutely correctly no options because the fullback is a basically like the most I won't say the most defensive. It's a it's not the word is wrong. It's not defensive, but fullback doesn't carry the ball right, so you won't see him dribbling a lot. So 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 if he doesn't have passing options that are you know there in front of him, if his composure isn't very good or his decision making isn't very good, he's gonna go like he do what he just did just now, which is exactly what happened. Okay. Here we go. What happened? Somebody died? <laughs> Am I safe? No. Physio, leave to physio. How should I play against teams that play 3 5 2, 3 4 1, 2, 3 4 2? Is that a better? Oh, wing back to wing back war. Wing back on attack all the way. Focus play on the flank where the wing backs are, and that's it. Go to war. <laughs> because when you're narrow, you gotta go to war with narrow tactic. You cannot go like, oh, maybe I want to play differently. No, 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 no. It's a battle of the four narrows. Yeah. There's no, there's no other way for you to play. Masse! Uh-oh. Wait. Oh, I can't leave countries. <laughs> I can't leave other. I have to be... I can only be offered a job in um, Turkey. I can't leave Turkey. That's the problem right now. Staff, job security... Uh, untouchable, untouchable, very secure. Galatasaray still. Stable, secure. Stable is still okay, right? So, I'm hoping Galatasaray come up, come undone. What are ways to deal with th uh, teams changing up? Changing things up? Well, they, they don't really change so much as like, you know, maybe... They, if you have been playing really well, they drop their mentality slightly. They might use uh, their home tact, their away tactic at home against you, for example. That's something that they, they might do. Um, so when that happens, you just have to look at your tactical system. My, were you playing counter-attacking to beat them the first time around? Maybe the second time around, you're going to have to think of a, your, your, your system might have to adapt. You have to adapt because they have adapted already. So they may have adapted by changing their tactics. Right, so I would suggest uh, looking at creating a, another tactic, right, that allows you to uh, camp or attack them a bit more. So you have to become a bit more bolder away from home. That's one option. The other option, of course, is to. It all depends on what they're playing. Really, at the end of the day, it all depends on what they're playing. You can't just. I, I just can't give you a random answer. It's not fair to you. So, like, I don't know what tactic you're playing, what tactic they're playing. So that's the reason why when I was playing those games. Like, um, I remembered um, 
there was one game I do I have to have a narrow and a white tactic, right? So my very attacking tactic is the 4-3-1-2. But they were playing a 4-2-3-1, which was surprised, which surprised me because I expected them to play with a narrow bottom heavy tactic like a 5-3-2, but they didn't play with a 4-2-3-1. So I I went into the game and I went, okay, immediately about 10 minutes or 15 minutes into the game, I switched to a 4-2-3-1. I matched their 4 2 3 one because I knew that um, they would get the the flanks against my flanks, and you know we weren't we were we had one or two injuries, so I went to work against them. So I have a narrow and a white tactic, and I also have sometimes sometimes in that set of tactics. Why did we win the league so easily? I had three tactics, right? I had a narrow tactic, I had a wide tactic. Both were attacking, and I had a shut up shop tactic, which is the four three three DM. So I had three tactics. So I had two options. So whenever teams played narrow against me, I had one option. I could either I could use either one of those two tactics, right? So sometimes I play a 4-3-1-2 and I discover, hmm, still not good enough, right? Because it's a battle of the narrows. Because sometimes we have matches where there are so many players congested in the middle. I, I We could have gone to a 0-0 draw. So I switched to the 4-2-3-1 wide and I uh, score a goal and then, you know, I did a whole Mourinho thing by going into a 4-3-3 DM just to, you know, see out the match. So my advice is generally this. Have a kind of a narrow set. If you can, have two kinds of setups, right? So if you could go with this, and I go with a narrow tactic, maybe... Let's okay, let's just create one narrow tactic for the fun of it, okay? Let's go. Let's just create one more narrow tactic. Yeah, wow, Daljit, you're such an idiot. Okay, halfway through the season, you're going to do this with your team. Okay, let's make a narrow tactic. What kind of narrow tactics can we work with? 3 4 1 2? No, 3 4 1 2. Okay. Okay, so let's go 3. I mean, I've, I've, I've been wanting to make a 3 4 1 2 as well. 3 4 2 1. Okay, so we're going to make one very funky 3 4 1 2. Okay, so we'll just make one. 3. Okay, let's make a 3 4 1 2. This is narrow. This is considered narrow. Okay, so you shall go. This is a very cowardly narrow tactic. <laughs> One flank only <laughs> kind of narrow tactic. I don't want to go both flanks. Man. I'm, too, I'm too chicken shit to go both flanks. Okay, so you are AM on support. You are. Maybe I make it even more interesting. Do I have. I don't even know if I've got the players for this. 4-2-1. This is super narrow. Yeah, this is even better. Hey, you know, this is like crazy, man. Yeah, but this is going to create a nice little attacking pattern here, okay? So, we go AM support. You now are a different role. Okay? You complete advance forward. Okay? Just be an advance forward. Just run away and don't come back. Okay? Okay, now let's see what else I can do. Let's now identify players in the team first. Okay, what do I, what do I have? I got this player who can score goals. Left footer, nine finishing ten. Right? He's going through a spell right now. You know, he's having he's having his period. Okay, this guy cuts inside from both wings. I like you. But how many goals have you scored actually? Seven out of twelve. Okay, not too bad. Okay, what about the other guy? We got another Ono or some shit, or some something like that. All right, there, there we go. How many goals have you scored? What is your what positions can he he can play here? Okay, good. So passing vision, wow, decisions for team. You're not a very exciting player to look at, man. Okay, so um, I can play this guy as an inverted winger on this flank or this flank, right? So he can play as an inverted winger on the right flank. Okay, so he's better off here. So here we play an inverter wing on attack. He's gonna go this way. This role becomes a ball winning if you don't support to protect. Mm. No, I don't think so. I just need a no deep line playmaker and defend. I run into trouble. Then he's gonna be doing a lot of creating and having to defend. So I could go box to box, he'll go up and down and occasionally he'll help to defend. But then 
All right, we'll just go CM on support since I'm such a, you know, I, I, I can't seem to make up my mind. <laughs> okay, so we'll just put him here and just put him on CM support. Now, this role can be an anchor. Okay, so just put DLP on support or DLP on defense. Let's go DLP on defense. Okay, so you DLP on defense. Now, you, you, hmm. okay, you winger on attack. How's about that? Okay, so we've got a winger going this way. But AM going this way, we've got AF going this way. This is one crazy ass tactic. It won't even work. Okay. But we want to see. I want to see how it performs, right? So AF, AMA, AM support. Okay. Uh, this guy can actually be a Traquatista. All right. We turn him into a Traquatista because he can roam in this area. He can drop, he can go up. AM support, AF attack. Engash is asking a bit too much. I'll give you the move into channels and roam from position. So you end up somewhere here sometimes. Okay. So you're gonna run this way. There's a gap now. This guy drops. This guy goes forward. No, we we'll try white midfield on attack first. Okay. All right. This is a very safe tactic. Right? It's like it probably will probably won't score all goals. DLP on defense, CM on support. CM on support is needed because we're gonna do this. So here. You can use a central defender on defense stopper. Here we're gonna use a cover. Here we're gonna use a ball playing defender on defense. Wow, we've gone for a completely funky looking order here. We're never gonna oh, confuse everybody by putting that. Then we're gonna go standard defensive line and a Santora Sons of the Beach, much higher line of engagement. Everybody close them down. Move up. Yes, go, go, do everything. Okay. Okay. Counter press. Do we want to counter press? When we lose the ball, all of you try to win the ball back. These three defenders will be shitting bricks. Okay. Counter. <laughs> Imagine that's if I was a defender in this team, right? I'll literally be shitting bricks every time. If my manager comes out to me, is this what we're gonna do? I'll be shitting bricks. Because these guys better win the ball. Otherwise, I'm like, you know, I'm like. Every time we lose the ball, I'll be I'll be I'll be panicking. Okay. DLP CM support. Okay. Inverter winger going this way. I mean we can play the DLP on defense here and the CM on support here. It doesn't really matter. Um but it actually does. Okay, the ball winning midfield on support is not a bad idea. Not a bad call. Okay, so we do a ball winning midfield on support. DLP. Okay. What are we gonna do now? I'm gonna do this and this, okay? Yeah, we just yeah, we just leave this out first. Okay, don't want to confuse people by having too many PIs and TIs. Okay, prevent the short goalkeeper distribution. Yes, standard and much higher line engagement. Okay, now what about you, son? Closing down even more, tackle harder. Go there, break a few legs tomorrow. You <laughs> tackle harder for once. Can we do this with you? No, we can't. You're not meant to do that. Okay, now what about you, Miss, my dear boy? If you sit narrow, we're gonna have a problem. You stay wide, okay? And then you cross from the deep, deep, deep places. Okay, cross more often and you cross to the far post. Why? Because there's nobody there. Yeah, at least if you hit the ball, you know, we can pray that you hit somebody. Done, quick pick. Let's go, brothers and sisters. <laughs> just for the fun of it, we just made a tactic. Never done before. This is a totally new tactic. Seeing it for the first time. Why do I do this to myself? But the idea here is that I make these tactics at least I, you know, I share my thought processes with you. It should work with a good, with a decent team. I am very certain of it. So when I make a tactic, this is what I do. I go in here straight away. Okay, what do I do now? I look for the damn transitions because I have to be able to see us at least winning the ball sometimes, right? So I don't expect these guys to go roaming up the pitch too high. Bang. See, that's the reason why that defender is the most important. He's on cover, but he went up first. Oh, look at that. Advance forward, came all the way back. Let's pause for a course. The thing you mentioned about teams, okay, I've done that. Is, split, is it bad playing narrow with with uh, more direct? Is it bad playing narrow with and more direct passes? No? No. I mean, it depends on your roles and duties, right? Like, do you have roles and duties like advance forward, running forward really far? Uh, do you have some wingers on... Do you, are you playing a winger? You know, he's going to be wide, then direct... 
might apply to some of the players to look for those players. So it depends on the mentality because that will affect it. I mean, it's not bad. Probably um, direct passes is to directly to a player, right? right? So it, it might be a longer pass instead. I would just look at your tactic first because that's a... Uh, I would say it's good or bad. It depends on your tactic. Any tips on how to create a pass and move tactics similar to Wenger Ball? What? Uh, one touch passing, shortest uh, passing, uh, higher tempo. Yeah, so that's what you want. And uh, you want to have plays... I'm, I know what you're talking about, man, Bivan. I know what you're talking about. The Invincibles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very possible in the game. Uh, you play narrow, shortest notch uh, passing and highest tempo. Players will very good off the ball. But you got to remember that Wenger Ball is very hard to replicate now. In fact, a lot of teams took inspiration for the, from the Wenger Ball system and they went on to create those kind of tactics. But that is before the days of the high press and um, this Gagan pressing and 4 2 3 ones and 4 3 3 DM systems because those are the good old days of the 4 4 2. Oh, nice. 3 4 1 2, my chef. Sweeper keeper support CD defense right midfielder support DLP defense CM attack. Yeah, how's your 3412 coming along? Mine's a 3421. Just done a bit differently. Hey, he was almost true. <laughs> Cheney was going away. Where's Cheney? How come he's playing there? No, no, no. Cheney, what are you doing there? You're supposed to be here. We created the whole tactic with this guy, right? And he's you know, and then instead we got this useless fellow there. I, I guess. Yeah, I guess we'll just. Ali Bakir was supposed to be playing, but I guess, you know, he's in, he's tired or what, you know, he's... Ooh. Come on, Joey, get there. Okay. You use wing back instead of white midfielder. Okay. I, I, I don't like... I mean, wing backs make it too defensive. That's my honest opinion. Oh, look at that. Look at that! One touch passing into the box, brothers and sisters. One touch passing into the box. We just got that done. Very first highlight. Look at this. Look at this, right? Bang. They go attack. They clear the ball. He picks it up. Then we go set. Boom. Oh, no. No highlight. Bloody hell. Okay, never mind. We have to wait for the next highlight, right? We have to wait for the next the highlight. I saw something there just now. Ooh la la! From outside the box, Joey. Smashing it home. The DLP is having a good game. Look at 6.8s, man. That's good news. It's a free kick, but we'll take it anyway. Okay, we've got... We'll call this tactic Aeroplane. <laughs> Three, four, two, one. Not bad. I haven't made one. I haven't made a new tactic in a while. Aeroplane. It's a it's a front foot tactic on one flank, right? So you see the wing backs going. Ah, come on, come on, come on, come on. You can play better than this. BWD on the flank to kick the ball long, especially with a white midfielder, right? Doku Khan, Tarkan goes around to Onu. Onu comes inside to Doku San. Doku San, you sof. You sof, you piece of useless. <laughs> You're useless, man. You're useless. You're attacking midfield on the left. You're useless, son. I'm gonna. I feel like taking him off straight away, right? 20 minutes on. He's, he's just getting on his age. You remove the counter press option because you're too chicken? Nah, man, don't be chicken. Don't be chicken. This game is not for the faint-hearted. Oh, look at that. Joey wins the ball. <laughs> I look. Those are the transitions I try to spot, right? We lose the ball, who wins it next? Hey, you know you're on to something, right? So you kind of know that your tactics is in the right place. Okay, now what? Now this portion... It's taking too too many moves. Uh, let's see what I need to do. Pass into space, encourage it, maybe, but that could give me problems. Standard? No, oh, we go this. Let's do this. Okay. Okay, shortest notch of passing and go super high tempo.
Who's my goal scorer? Waklaf Journey. Not bad. Go, boys. Go, boys. Takan. Oh, no. Back to Takan. To Joey. To Dokukan. To Oh, no. To Dokukan. To Vego. Oh, Yusuf. Yusuf, really? Okay. That was your last chance to impress me. Okay? Your last chance. You're off the pitch now. I'm looking for the next substitute. Bloody useless piece of shit. Man! All he does is kick the ball like that. Okay, what do we want? We want this guy to be... Uh, I'm so tempted to go with an attacking role here right now. Okay, this is what we're going to do, right? We're going to be bold. In put the wing on support. we got to be bold, brothers and sisters. Okay. Dear Lord, I'm going to lose this game, but I can't, I'm going to I'm going to get hammered. Okay. Um, I don't even have an inverter winger. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll put Ali Baki, a striker here. Guys, I have obviously lost the plot. We'll put, can you dribble? You can dribble. You got 13. You got a right foot. Okay. We'll put you here. Yeah, at least you can attack. At least you, you know, you 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 got a bit of M in you, right? Even though your attacking is nonsensical. Yeah, you become a Dragotista. Dukusan, Jove, Takan, Melkisa, who's not a defender, if, you know. It's actually a central midfielder. Takan, Fate Aksoi, Ahmed Ogun, back to Dosukan. Oh, they lose the ball, but the second ball is won. Joey is there. Seriously, we're just making substitutes. The more I see somebody do something wrong, he subs he subbed off the bay. He subbed off. Okay, Malkisa, you're off. Bye. Thank you for all your fish. <laughs> we don't need you anymore. The true Gigan press style kills Tikitaka. True Gigan press style kills Tikitaka. Well, yeah, maybe. Okay, what else can we do? Tempo, sometimes being too high doesn't really help you very much. Does not help much if the tempo is too high. But because I got attack duties, right? Those uh, the high tempo is going to influence, may influence those guys slightly. Like the passing might get to. I don't. Know. We're just looking at this right now. Does it look like it changed a lot? No, right. Does the tempo also alter the pressing urgency? No, it does not. Uh, tempo does not affect te tempo is everything in the game, but it does not. If I'm not mistaken, no, you don't you don't press more with a higher tempo. You can try it out. Set your pressing meter to zero and adjust your tempo. You see the players still pressing the same. Right, we can do that right now if you want. Okay, let's just watch this, okay? Okay, Daljit. Yes, I know. I'm just about to change everybody's pressing instructions again. Anybody here? Nope. Okay, good. Nobody has got funny pressing instructions. Okay, good. So we drop pressing urgency to... Now we're playing higher, right? <laughs> but okay. If I can see goals now. So let's go. That's your line of engagement. See that? This is your line of engagement. This is still the zonal marking. See? Gotta go comprehensive. Because right now, they're all being affected by this. So there's a zonal marking, right? The player will still go and mark, uh, close on a player. So it's not like they're gonna press any harder. The tempo still, you know, see the tempo still very high. No change. Okay. All right, now we now we see the tempo. It's high, still very high. That is interception counter pressing, not pressing. FYI, we are waiting for a pressing thing to happen. So far, it's all been counter pressing. 
So that's different. This is pressing. See? Some of them are not moving. Some of them are, but it's because they're in the zone. So they are obeying the line of engagement. See, all these are line of engagement. This is all line of engagement. Line of engagement. This role is pressing more. This is a ball playing defender. This is a DLP on defense. Okay. Now we draw the tempo. You just watch how much difference is it going to make. And okay, we drop the meter, we watch our full match. So ultimately, it's going to be your line. The most important thing is your line engagement. And your mentality. Look at these guys. They're not moving. This guy is tracking. That's uh, the white midfielder. See, it's the same, right? See, most of them, man, you see, they're not closing down. They're just tracking. That's all. They're not like going for the player. They're just moving along the channel. And they're moving on the channel. Like, you know, okay, this one. No idea why this guy is closing him down. Oh, sorry, line of engagement. Okay. Now we drop the line of engagement. Now I drop the line of engagement all the way here, right? Just, oh my goodness. Now the line of engagement has been dropped. Okay. Now I'm in trouble. The tactics intensity has dropped like crazy, man. We gotta take somebody off. This guy. We want Calgon. No highlights. Joey. Can I can I make all my did I make all my subsidies? No, right? Um Paula. Joey. Shit. See? Now you look, this guy has no choice. He has to commit, right? This guy has to commit. When they reach a certain position, right, a player has to commit to the tackle regardless of your tempo, whatever nonsense, right? The player's going to step up. Okay, let's go, let's go. This, this Everybody's mentality has changed because of the set piece. Right, so these guys are on attack, attack. Uh, the, uh, the team that won the count was on a counter. All his mentalities went up. Look at this. They're all in this zone right now. Right. Look where they are. Nobody's pressing. Oh dear lord. Don't concede, okay? So before I can start conceding goals, I'm changing this back. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going back to this. And I am playing this tactic. Hey Dylan, how are you man? Doing well, how are you doing? So we, what is this? We call this tactic aeroplane, right? Oh, you're so smart. So is this what your or your three four two one slightly different, right? Yeah, wing backs instead of um, right. My mine has got white midfielder and inverted wing, or in mine has got inverted wingers. I like this setup. I like it when it's got wingers or inverted wingers.
Because tempo only affects passing. And it will affect your players off the ball movement when you have the ball. So if you play on higher tempo, then sometimes you will see that they will look to pass the ball long, right? Because your tempo is higher. So if they have got like an attack duty in front, then sometimes you might see the ball going to the attack duty much earlier. But you see, our tactic is different. Our tactic is so many burgers in close proximity, right? It just, I mean, not from here to here, but from here to here, this whole group is so close together. Where's my aeroplane? Okay. No, I don't have to do that. I can just do this. Okay, let's go. I want to put Shani here now. And then, um, Kalgan Yaman in front. Again, I put Yusuf in the white midfielder position. And now we can watch it on sideline view. I changed one rule. Uh, this guy. The thing about this tactic, right, the three four one two. If you play a winger, he will he will a wing back. He will arrive to score goals. Keepers, this keeper is not one of our best. It'll be interesting, right? How this tactic does against a 4-4-2. Sun Tzu. Hi, Daljit from Kashim Pasha District, Istanbul. There is no possibility that these rules will be applied in two years. It destroys all the game fun, yeah? It kind of does, but it's great for youth development, I guess. Whoever wants to do it there, they're probably looking at the future. I mean, it's going to be tough for um, sides there in uh, Turkey because they will, you know, they only have, they have to feel two youngsters all the time. And then they, when they go to Europe, they can, you know, feel as many as uh, proper ones as they can. The Emic, the, our keeper really doesn't know how to use his hands. <laughs> it's very annoying. We have to find a new keeper, man. Our keeper retired without giving me notice. This is a nothing goal.
Hey, how are you, man? Live for FM. Live for FM. Antalya. My Kashim Pasha side is not doing well, man, this game. You can see the one goal. Is, that, is this Yusuf Edrogan? I shouldn't have put him in this position. Vulcan here. But oh, they have a very interesting 4-4-2. White midfielder, white midfielder, box-to-box -box CM. This guy, we have to find out whether he's a CM on a tank. Uh, fullback, this is a DLF on support AF. DLF on attack and AF, that's it. Two attack duties. And they just hoof the ball. Very structured system. Check, check, check. Ay, 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 ay. They're not noticed much, but like it's like QPR. I like this club. I'm enjoying my save with Kashim Pasha. Chasing for the chasing for honors among the big boys. Trying to get noticed by Gala Tasareg, Fenerbahce. Hoping they offer me a job. I don't believe it, man. It's us banging the door. We, what's, it is a new tactic. Yeah, we never played this tactic before. Unbelievables. Yeah. This is literally the craziest three four three I've set up. Too late. Too late, too late, too late. I wanted to... I wanted to set up the two white players. There's still time. Okay. I want them to come here.
That's it. How does that group look like now? Kashi Pasha, 10 points, 10 points. Okay, we've qualified. We have qualified. Oh, we drew once against who? Sparta Praha. I'm just playing some crazy tactics. Just, I just felt like creating something on the blue. So we made this. Inverted winger base tactic. I mean, I could have gone with something like this. Yeah, now we can also play like this. So that one tactic has got four or five permutations. Right, so here we go. Um, four minutes, okay. We'll just turn this guy into a Mezala on support. Now, these two are going to hold hands and kiss each other to death to us part. Um, I will just... Change this. No, keep this like that. Keep that like that. Keep, turn this guy into a DLP on defense. <laughs> Turn this guy into a mess. Okay. Let's see what happens, right? Okay, done. Is it possible to play counter attack tactic on a 4 3 1 2 formation? No, not really. Because uh, you gotta have to have those wing backs attacking, right? So they're gonna have to dominate the flank. So you can't really sit back and soak and hit teams on the break because you only have that two, three cycles set up in a central configuration. If SI were to give us a target man in the center, the AMC position maybe is possible. But it's gonna be really hard. To set up, set up a 4 3 1 2 is a counter attacking setup. Okay, so we are now playing this on comprehensive islands. Let's do a 2D classic. So now we set up slightly differently, right? So. Oh my god, the guy went all the way. Oh yeah, we want to change this role. Uh, where is he? DCL left. But he can be a ball playing defender. Team instructions will ball into box. No worries, man. I'm happy to answer questions. Ah. So I have to remember to get a new keeper. I have to remember to get a new keeper, man. Alright, seen enough. Let's go on Kia Lights.
sa demand mo. This is a very defensive setup, right? I don't mind playing like this against that 4 2 3 1. Well, this is really defensive. It's inside. Checks you. Ooh! Ha ha ha! What a goal! What a goal! Get it? Okay, our ball. Okay, the build up attack. Oh, B. From the other side. Ooh. Ah, he go. The guy, the Trekotista is trying to score a second goal. The AM on the right is having a brilliant game. The Mazala is ruling the game, but our, our Joey is like, Joey is like, please, boss, you always make me play all these matches. I am getting tired. 34 minutes, I have to take him off. Joey has to be rested for like a, two weeks, man. Sent to Monaco. No, allow him to go and chill out with all the... the uh, let him have, just have a good time, man. He can go wherever he wants. Right. Di Paolo already picks out a yellow card. He is a good girl. Huh? Play instructions. He's off tackles. Do you find that the Trakotista is giving as many support as the Yolo Strike? Yeah, I, I think the Trakotista is doing well. I want you to drift around. The Mazala is the king. The Trakotista sometimes needs, can drop back. But the thing is, the Trakotista, I can play a track. The reason why I want to play a Trakotista is that there's a role that's dropping back. Otherwise, I might have an issue. Then I have to play an AF that's dropping back or a striker that's dropping back. So that was my, that was my original intention. To just put pressure on people's defense, uh, play, uh, defenses. But now my my this I mean there are other configurations I guess you can play something like um deep line forward and support and then this guy can be a shadow striker. Then you get vertical a bit more diff uh slightly different vertical movement in the front. So this guy will drop off and this guy will attack the space. Then this guy is just hanging about. Mazala is helping develop play here. Nah, it also work. I mean, the AF is like a cheap solution because then I have somebody attacking the box, right? So he will put pressure on their uh, defenders. So while the defenders are under pressure, these two guys bring up the ball on the flanks. Uh, why don't I have a left back? I have to play him. This is a brutal 1-0. Look at my players, they're almost like at the end of their rope. Look at our players and their players. <laughs> These guys, they've been subbing quite a few players, but we uh, we don't have many subs left. Ooh, your anticipation not very good. Ah, he's going to concede. Damn it. Ah, he missed time that. You know, this is so critical for this role. If he misses one of that, you're always going to have problems. Then this guy is not a defend, not a very good defender. And this is definitely a keeper that we need to replace. Damn it. We should never have conceded. I should have done something about this position. This guy is not a defender. He's not a defender at all. That was my mistake, man. I should have done this. And this guy's a CD. On NCD, rather. Damn it. 
Getting too comfortable. Tracotista versus Shadow Striker. I pr Between a Tracotista and a Shadow Striker, I guess the the there's no who is better. It's how your tactic has been set up, right? Because a Tracotista is gonna drop deep. A Shadow Striker is very good at linking up plays. A Tracotista is like a playmaking striker. A Shadow Striker is just a no deeper striker. That's all. So it depends on what you want. There are times when a Tracotista is better than a Shadow Striker. And there's going to be times that the Shadow Striker is better than a Tracotista. It depends on your tactical setup. Yeah. This is Nagel's man, 3 4 2 1. I don't think so. I don't even know if it's Nagel's man, 3 4 2 1. But wouldn't your AM be the one that's dropping back and be the link man? The AM is only a link man on the right flank, not on the left flank. Yeah. Unless I put Rome from position. I put Rome from position, man, he could be. He's dropping here. This Tracotista can attack the box. Can attack this area as well, right? When he's empty. But he sometimes drops deep. So I'm not I'm not entirely sure about this track at the moment. It could be uh if I put a shadow striker, then these two guys have to open up, right? So that's what happened just now, right? I turned this guy into, I turned one of these into a shadow striker. So we open up this whole gap. I mean, this is gonna be very, very nice and compact to build up play. Hardly see any reason why we'll lose the ball here. But the moment I went Shadow Striker, I lost the ball. Because then this player is not going to be roaming and dropping. See, both these roles are roaming and dropping. Shadow Striker would have done that. Shadow Striker would have attacked the area straight away. So when this, this guy went forward and this guy dropped, the gap appeared. Mazala had to do more defending. The ball went right over us. So, yeah, that was a mistake. I should never have gone for Shadow Striker. I was too yichi yichi, huh? Stupidissimo. Stupidissimo. Real stupid. That was the dumbest thing I've ever done. Straight away I go holiday. Straight away the next thing I want to do is go holiday until next match. I am so angry. Because that should never have happened. <laughs> If I paid attention to what I was doing, it would not have happened. I was very distracted. I, I, I just did, I was, I, I don't know, my brain stopped thinking. The Shadow Striker in front of the Mazala was a bad move. It was a big, bad, bad move, man. For me. Because I don't have, because the thing is, in certain, certain scenarios, it's not too bad. But then you need the defenders. You have to make sure that those defenders at the back uh, can do the job. See, I, my defenders, my left defender is not a defender. My goalkeeper needs to be replaced. And what, we haven't even reached the, uh, yeah. Once it gets to December, we'll look, see my scouting priorities. We're looking for a keeper. That was this guy. Mohammed is sick. <laughs> Dear Lord. Scouting center. Goalkeepers. We got one goalkeeper, Shipman. I may even go foreign for the goalkeeper. Shortlist, scout, no, scouted players, filter, all the guys. I've been looking here. Yeah. The best is this guy, but he's at Fenerbahce. Scouting required eight. Can he play 13 and 14 reflexes, handling 11? No, it's not much. He's not any different from what I have already. Look, no man. Aerial reach one to nine. Guess again. Thirteen to thirteen. No. Scouting center. No. Okay, we're just gonna do a simple old player search. Uh clear. Let's be. Let's 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 do more, right? So we always believe in buying keepers, not in uh, developing them. Aerial reach, handling, reflexes. Let's go for 13 as a baseline. All right. Uh, let's go to Irish about 14, handling 14, 14. This is the, this is the lowest, I guess, I can go. Um, now we go to nationality. I'm all Turkish first, British. Nation of birth. General, general, where's general? Nation of birth. Where's nation of birth? Nation of birth. Afghanistan. Turkey, 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 Turkey,
Wow, we got a lot of 14, 14, 14. All right. But of course, you know, 2.4 million. Okan Koksu. Okay. We'll scout a few, I guess. Um, okay, we'll, we'll do the search bar. Bring it down to about 31. Okay. All right, we got quite. We don't have a lot, right? So, okay. So, dang. All these keepers are going to get scouted. Until full knowledge, go there and find out. I need a keeper, man. What happened to my your new gen's face? I don't use the new gen's face. I got all kinds of problems with uh, scratches and stuff, so I don't put faces on them anymore. I don't. I don't have. I don't have face packs and new gen's faces. I always have to worry about. I always have to worry about crashes, like you know, uh, the damn thing not performing very well. So I've avoided it. Maybe, yeah. I know some of you might. I mean, I occasionally I feel like having faces on it, but can't be asked. Some of us, yeah. Playing 4 4 2 always find hard to have shots in away games. I try defensive but end up defending all the time. Also try attacking but end up fine nil. Playing 4 4 2 find hard to have shots in away games. You gotta put, play narrow, short, uh, shorter passing, narrow. You, 4 4 2, you generally have to be, have a you have to have a good squad. Yeah, you have to have a good squad. My my initial my Basically, I want to say is you need a good team if you want to do that with a 4 4 2. Or you need to set it up in such a way that you may have, you know, you're attacking them from a deeper location to give you more options to score goals. So sometimes when you're playing with a 4 4 2, you know, the traditional way of setting up is quite straightforward, like target man poacher. But sometimes you want other options, like, you know, because a 4 4 2, I've done a video on a 4 4 2 about the many permutations of a 4 4 2. I think we created something like 15 different versions of a 4 4 2. Yeah, and all of them work. So, there are so many permutations of a 442. So it's really um you becoming more if you're gonna play a 442, you wanna be good at a 442, then I suggest be coming to terms and understanding all the different permutations of a 442. Because in games you sometimes gonna to have to change things around, right? You can't just use the 442 they're using, but you have to use a slightly different version of a 442. Maybe you wanna attack them. Uh, from a from a deeper position, maybe you want to use a inverted winger instead of a regular winger on one of the flanks. Yeah, these are all different ways of playing with a four four two. Why are we still playing with this tactic? Uh oh. You know I have issues with uh, some of the players in this tactic, but I went straight into this tactic without thinking. All right, we're gonna go load arrow. The first version, right? Aeroplane. Let's go. Uh, we got, we have, yeah, this is this, not the one with the Shadow Striker. All right, this is going to be the last game, man. Kids should be back. Going to have to speed things up. And once again, guys, uh, don't forget this weekend, Twitch. Um, if you if you already know my Twitch handle, that's also Bustanet. It's like, you know, I'm so original. Uh, I will be playing in uh, the FM playoffs organized by Kickman Plays and Moza Plays. Uh, I want to thank them for inviting me to the FM playoffs. So you shall see me taking part on Friday. Uh, draft is, oh, sorry, on Saturday. Draft starts at 4 p.m. British Standard Time. And then the following day is uh, the actual event where we play off against each other. So please, please, please make sure that uh, you pop in or at least give me some support. <laughs> Go, baby. 
Oh, you should have scored a second goal, right? You should have scored a second goal. Oh, Respawn, we owe them for last season. We owe them even for this season. <laughs> I think they, this is our chance to get revenge on them. So I got white midfielder on the left flank. This is like a bit safe, this, this setup. Oh, Joseph, you can always join me on... Um, you can join us. Patreon, man. That's it. Just become a patron. Join us on the Patreon channel. If you... If you, you know, which is very easy, right? So the details are there. Then once we can be, you can become a YouTube member as well of the channel. On uh, the main channel, Busternet, you can become a YouTube member, get invited to our Discord straight away. And then you can join us in all these wonderful Fandangle adventures. <laughs> oh yeah, like draft mode, right? I definitely want to organize one tonight. If I can stay awake. I want to do draft with you guys. I need practice, man. I've never done draft mode before. Yeah, don't skip the ads, guys. Hit the like button and don't skip the ads. Finally, I got partnered on this channel. Yeah, so I'm looking for... Because I need to... I've never done draft mode, so I need to practice against you guys. Uh, Yeah. Absolutely no clue what I'm doing when it comes to draft mode. Man. Okay, not bad. Uh, Taken the lead, but our doku son, our... Our Trequatis are not playing very well. It's this guy here. No, he's not. Elias is playing as a Trequatis. Then he is just like shite. Yeah, he's shite, man. Okay. Wrong. The wrong idiot. Played the wrong player there. Okay, um, and I quickly make changes and berate the team. So it's, if you want to, then yeah. Become a member of the channel over at the big channel, Bustanet. Oh man, it's, come on, it must be offside. He must be offside. He must be offside. We don't, we're not coming off, right? We are still going for, we are still going guns and roses on this team, man. We're not, we're not dropping back to defend. We're just going to keep attacking. Okay. Swap. I'm going to go do a different now uh no i'm gonna go with a dlf on attack dlf on attack advance forward white me feel on attack white me feel on attack go direct hit pass okay um this guy's just gonna be a cd yes it looks a bit odd me doing this with an offside trap. So none of them on the same duty. All three of them on different duties. I want to see if I can see the goal as well. This is the, this is the, the benefit of doing something like this. You keep the back line occupied. Right. So they're always under pressure. So it's pretty hard for them to clear the ball. So instead of going to all defensive, you can put a lot more pressure on their back line, right? So that they can't build attacks up because every time they have to play short, they if you got players so close to them wanting to you know press them, so that's another option. Okay. That's it. Wow, not bad, huh? We made a 3-4-2-1. <laughs> that was so crazy, man. I love this. 
It's like just a fun, fun thing to do. Yeah, I always love. I mean, I enjoy you guys kept popping on the stream. I I love to help you guys out with your you know your questions and tactics. As you can see, I'll even try and create it on the stream just for the fun of it. But it's not a re you know it's not a requirement. You know, I do that. Therefore, you join my channel or whatever or support. You know, I just do it because I want to help you guys out. So, well, thank everybody for popping out today's stream. I hope you had fun. Um, Euros videos are going to start on the main channel very, very soon. So don't forget to catch me up on YouTube, Bustanet. And uh, yes, uh, you guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon. Yes, I'm nursing a cold. I've gotten a cold. So I'm hoping that I get better very soon because I'm not feeling so good right now. So you guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.